Anheuser-Busch's chief marketing officer has announced that he will be stepping down following Bud Light's extreme sales slump following the Dylan Mulvaney March Madness controversy. The news follows months after many consumers boycotted Bud Light over its partnership with transgender influencer Dylan Mulaney. Anheuser-Busch sold $297 million worth of Bud Light for the four weeks ending May 28th, which according to CBS News reporting was a 23% drop from the same period a year before. Now, I don't know if we can credit Dylan Mulvaney for the downfall of Bud Light. This is a company with steadily declining sales year after year. And also, you had folks who were blind taste testing the product and it was steadily declining year over year as well. In 2022, a blind taste test ranked Bud Light six among eight beers tested. This is reporting from The Hill. And then another 22, uh, 2022 test ranked it seventh out of 10. Then in 2023, it was ranked 22nd out of 28 light beers. That's insane to have the quality of a product be declining in popularity that much in a blind taste test, no marketing. I also don't think that they are shuffling staff now because of something that happened in May. Also, the person taking the marketing officer's position is the person who is responsible for sales and sales are the main problem here. So I really think we're confusing correlation with causation by thinking that Bud Light sending an influencer a product is what tanked the company. I, I do think that the reason for this is that they have a product that's easily replaceable. I think it's fair to say that Bud Light is a legitimately crappy product. It's a beer that doesn't taste good. However, there is a, a very specific timing of when their sales started to drop more dramatically after the Dylan Mulvaney incident. Yes, it was declining year over year, but certainly not to the tune of 23% as it did after the Dylan Mulvaney influencer sponsorship. And there's a pretty much direct line that you can draw from people intentionally boycotting the product because of this partnership and its sales declining more dramatically. And I hear what you're saying about the sales individual being promoted to the position of the marketing individual. However, this was ultimately a marketing problem. You can only sell a product that people are willing to buy and people who are typically your consumer base feel like it agrees with their values or agrees with their lifestyle. And when the marketing department decided to have this partnership with Dylan Mulvaney, they had basically slapped their customer base in the face because this is a product that for a long time was marketed to the sort of red-blooded, football-loving American who frankly thinks the whole idea of transgenderness and, uh, and the idea that you can have a sex change and become a member of the opposite sex as ridiculous. And they thought it was insulting that this product that they had been so loyal to for years and years and years had engaged with this individual who was lying about who they were, lying to them, and was fundamentally opposed to the type of American values and Christian values that they agree with. And so I think there is definitely a correlation between what happened with Dylan Mulvaney and Bud Light sales tanking. The effect was immediate and obvious. I mean, even just going to grocery stores, you would see that there were suddenly rebates for the product that rendered it basically free. People were were begging customers to take cases of Bud Light. When I would go golfing in Northern Virginia, of all places, the cart girls no longer stocked Bud Light. They only had Coors Light and uh, associated products like Miller Light. Um, so I, I just don't think it's accurate to say that the Dylan Mulvaney partnership had nothing to do with the sales decline. I don't think it's that it had nothing to do with it. I think perhaps the subsequent handling of the reaction to Dylan Mulvaney being some kind of brand partner, you have these huge companies giving all kinds of people, including transgender people, products that are personalized on a regular basis. I think the reason that Bud Light saw its sales decline because it was easy to leave Bud Light. Although there's high recognition for Bud Light as a product, its consumer satisfaction was low. So they experienced low customer loyalty. For a company like Nike, where you have high customer satisfaction, they believe it's a high quality product, you had their support of Colin Kaepernick actually be met with a 5% sales increase. So I don't think it's the fact that, you know, Bud Light was sending out their product with Dylan Mulvaney's face on it to her home for her, her to try it or drink it on camera or whatever it was. 
they could have followed up and said, listen, we have a, a huge consumer base. We're Bud Light. We send our product to all different kinds of people. But what instead they did was apologize, which made it very clear that what they were doing is making a political statement, which is unpopular altogether, regardless of what political statement it is. 59% of Americans, according to recent polling, don't want corporations to be making any kind of political statement. So I think the shuffling of personnel at Bud Light has more to do with they have a declining product and they want to rely on advertising to allow them to go back to the same market share that they enjoyed that's now been overtaken by Modelo. And I don't think it has much to do with people getting punished over the Dylan Mulvaney situation. They actually didn't apologize, though. They did exactly what you said they should do, which is they said, we send our, our product to all kinds of influencers and we stand by our decision. The CEO never apologized by any means. And instead, what they did was actually even more insulting to the consumer base that had a problem with this because they started running these like traditional Clydesdale pro-America ads, trying to recapture that sentiment that Bud Light used to enjoy without ever really acknowledging the incident or why people were upset about it or apologizing. Um, so that was what really alienated the consumer base more. But your point is well taken in that Bud Light is a replaceable product because it's not very good. Coors Light is objectively the better light beer if you're going to be at a bar slamming, uh, you know, slamming cheap beer. Totally agree with that. And it's actually one of my complaints about conservative boycotts is that they never want to engage in a boycott against a company that doesn't ally align with their values when it's actually difficult. So, for example, Target um, experienced a boycott after they had the pro-LGBTQ plus uh, clothing in the kids section um, a little while ago, and that boycott didn't last nearly as long as Bud Light because women in the conservative movement don't really like to give up shopping at Target because it's easy and they like it. And same thing with Nike. I've been boycotting Nike since the whole situation where Colin Kaepernick decided that it was racist to have Betsy Ross flag uh, socks, as well as the fact that they make most of their products in sweatshops and have all kinds of human rights abuses. It's another reason why I try not to shop at Amazon. And so it is kind of annoying to me that the Bud Light situation is the only time when conservatives were able to launch a slightly successful boycott and every other brand that spits in their face, they're like, oh, whatever, I just like Nike too much. It's always bothered me. But I think that's kind of changing because I do think the Bud Light situation showed conservatives that they have much more market power than they ever realized was possible. And they can do a lot of the same tactics that left-wing consumers use to get brands to align with their values and have a lot of uh, sway over these corporate decisions when previously they might have just sat there and, and let corporations um, have these values that they found very objectionable. I don't know. I think the statement from the Anheuser-Busch CEO, Brian Whitworth, was kind of an apology. They said, you know, we're responsible for ensuring every consumer feels proud of the beer we brew. We have thousands of partners, millions of fans, and a proud history of supporting our communities, military first responders, sports fans, and hardworking Americans everywhere. This sounds like the kind of statement that they feel badly, that they made people who drink Bud Light not proud to drink Bud Light. It does feel to me like walking back I don't know, an initial political statement that they've made or doubling down on a political statement. But it does feel political to say they're taking responsibility for ensuring every consumer feels proud of the beer we brew and some recognition that they've divided people. They said we've never intended to be a part of a discussion that divides people or in the business of bringing people together over beer. They didn't really uh, do anything to the effect of saying, you know, it's it's just an influencer collaboration. It seems that they recognize they made people who formerly drank Bud Light feel bad. And so I think the statement made people upset uh, who were progressive because they didn't say anything to the effect of, hey, it's no big deal if transgender people get our product. We support the transgender community. And then you had members of the right say, well, they didn't do anything to cater back to us and say, you know what, actually, guys, we're sorry. Our real base is, you know, conservatives. It's people who are America loving beer drinkers who are very skeptical of the genderqueer movement. You know, I think that they were upset that it was a political statement, but it didn't cater to either side. I don't know. Perhaps if they catered to one side over another, they would have enjoyed the 5% sales increase that Nike did. I don't see that being the case simply because 
they have a low quality product for it to jump from ranking seventh out of 10 beers in 2022 to 22nd out of 28 beers in 2023 it sounds to me that they're trying really hard to push a product that just was no longer popular in the market I think the anodyne nature of that statement was precisely the problem, though, because they said a whole lot of words without really saying anything. And so it made them appear spineless in the face of what was happening. And I, I think people would have actually had more respect for them either way if they had taken a firm stance in response to what happened, as opposed to basically just releasing a bunch of platitudes. But I guess the proof is in the pudding. Their sales are still cratering and they don't seem to have a plan to get things back on track. We'll be back with more Rising after this.